And another thing I wanted to talk about is kind of that overall shape of the camper. I want the windows too. That's with the windows going yacht way instead of yacht way. But anyways, um, the overall shape, I really would like to do more of like the traditional teardrop where you have this nice big curve here and then this really slow curve in the back. Um, I'd like that shape. I'd like to do that shape, but that also cuts down on our storage area in the back quite a bit. Um, the square drop design allows for a whole lot more storage, um, you know, by almost like 50%. Um, not quite, but you know, um, the problem, and see this is a, a less round, so this is a, a large curve, smaller curve. Um, the thing is, this is the best gas mileage. Um, this is the, the most aerodynamic the less turbulence so it's easier to pull you can go faster you can um, uh, spend less in the gas which right now you know gas here in Vegas is you know well over five dollars a gallon in in a lot of places um, this would be not as bad it's good compromise because you've got low turbulence good mileage and you have a lot of storage but I don't like the look overall shape is kind of twinkie-ish um, and then of course the square drop, you have a lot of storage area, but you're also creating a lot of turbulence because the back is squared off. A square back creates a lot of turbulence, which is why you used to see those semi trucks with those kind of deflector things off the back that they got sued for and now you can't have them no more because of that. But regardless, best gas mileage could drive faster I really want to do this, but again, that's a little harder to build and we're losing a lot of storage. But with the size of that, I mean, you're talking a storage compartment, seven foot wide by probably, so seven foot across and won't be quite five feet long because it'll be over the tank just a hair, but four and a half to five feet deep and then and then curving down you know I mean that's a lot of room so not quite sure I really am leaning this way but this would be more utilitarian you know a lot of the off-road campers square drops are, are more in that shape and then there's the whole angular thing where you just everything is straight line so you have a straight angle here a uh, straight angle, uh, you know, straight line, but everything's angular. Um, this wouldn't be flat. You'd have a little bit of a tilt. So you kind of mimic this overall shape with a little bit of a, a tilted line and then, a, you know, a line and then another line. I, I might do that too. I might do some drawings and see what I can come up with in that respect. But for now, this is kind of our choices. So we'll see see what we go with alrighty then so uh, today's Sunday I worked on the camper yesterday and I totally intended to do a time-lapse time-lapse video and I completely spaced it out so I did all this work yesterday and I didn't cover it so we'll just go over it real quick I did all the finish welding on these runners so those are finished welded in place. <clears throat> Same thing with these reinforcements. Then I got that one. That was from the previous trailer. Got that one cleaned up, cut to size, welded in, perma welded. This one's perma welded too. Um, they're both kind of in there on the angle because they were a little too short. Plus, you know, the tank width. And then I wanted to put some reinforcements in the corners. And then we got the tank mounts in. So we got down here, we got these brackets permanently welded in place. So this side is fixed. And then we got a plywood floor cut out for the little bumpy widget there. 
and we got some marks where the tank needs to go to be centered and that's centered from the side frame not from this because this one is actually in closer than that side this side this side the width is a little wider here so that mark is closer to the corner than that one so anyways that puts the center the distance here to here roughly the same there to there and then i thought i was done this side i made removable so i got a bolt there and then i've got a couple of nylon nuts on that side i've actually got this nut welded in place and then a nylon nut after it and in case you don't know if you're doing anything on a vehicle especially anything on the exterior you, you exterior you want it to be some kind of lock nut nylon nut or like these nuts these bolts and nuts for the axle stuff they all have um, crimps on the ends so that they're actually locking nuts because vibration will cause things to come loose there's little can't really see them but there's little dimples um, that cause those to lock Let's see if we can get you a shot there see those little dimples grab onto the bolt so this becomes a locking nut uh, so anyways um, I need to today I'm just gonna make some little um, some support right here and right here just to keep the tank from sliding back and forth and I might do some kind of cushioning but I don't know if I really need that at that point um, after that the tank is mostly done except for now because I raised it up it sticks above the frame line a little bit because I didn't want it I didn't want that nipple sticking below the axle line so that drain nipple over there is if I had gone if I had put the top of the tank flush with this then that that drain nipple right there that would have been lower than the axle which wouldn't have been a good idea if we hit a rock or something we'd lose all our water damage the tank so and then we've got our mounts we've got our mounts on here for the jack so we can jack up um, one side or the other I only have one of these but I have two mounts and I did that on purpose so that I can level the camper with this this is basically my leveling system so I don't have to put down no blocks I don't have to worry about none of that crap I would still have to worry about rolling so still gonna have to you know worry about that a little bit put down some chalks but I'm probably gonna do the X chalk thing um, have the X chalk press against the tire to keep it from rolling that way we don't have nothing on the ground to worry about but I only have one of those so whichever side is the low side let's say that side is the low side and they can't so the camper is tilted like this instead of like that then we'll take it and we'll move it onto that side pin it in raise up that side till it's level so that's the plan um, of course i'll have to get a little level thing somewhere and stick it somewhere on the frame probably i'll put it right in the middle back here somewhere um, one thing i did get really annoyed and pissed off about i ordered these parts from e-trailer and this coupler here said it was the one for that which the diameter the outside diameter of the ring so this diameter is correct the depth is a little bit shorter than the original one but these pinholes are too small these are 5 8 a little bit over 5 8 and originally they were half inch and I had to drill them out this is the original one and it sticks out further and came with 5 8 holes so this one I mean you can't really perceive it but this one is longer this is the one that came with 
the jack. This one sticks out just a hair longer, so there's no clearance issues. And then the hole is a 5 8 The one over there was too short. I had to shave, you can kind of see, I had to shave a little bit off of there so I could get it to clear the weld because the weld bead was butting into it and the hole was the wrong size. So the diameter across was correct. So I was able to fix the other issues, but still that's, that's something to look out for if you're gonna do that, it's kind of crappy. Um, I don't have them finish welded. So I still need to finish weld those. Um, I was waiting on the tongue coupler, the A-frame coupler. Unfortunately, when I checked my order on e-trailer, I had three items. I had the tongue jack, the cool one, um, the, the coupler, and uh, the springs. And it showed that the order wasn't going to ship until 2023 because it was waiting on the springs. So I was like, well, okay. So I canceled the spring order and I figured those springs were too light anyway. After doing some math, I realized this thing, we're already at um, 650 pounds sitting right here right now um, with the tongue, with the tongue on, that'd be 650. So we're probably gonna hit a thousand pounds really fast and then probably speed right through that by the time we add in all of our gear. So I figured, I'll cancel the spring order. That'll get me the, the, the jack and it'll get me the um, coupler, A-frame coupler, get me that quicker so I can get the tongue built. But the problem then, I checked like a couple hours later and it showed that it wasn't gonna ship till December waiting on the coupler. So then I canceled the coupler, only left the jack with the cool one with the handle that's removable and you can stick your drill on it and go rent with the drill, so that's cool. So that is shipped, or shipping, but then I went to Amazon to order the, the, the coupler, because I need a coupler so I can build the tongue. So now I'm waiting on Amazon. Amazon said, oh, prime delivery next day. It should have been here Friday, and now it's Sunday, and it's still not here. So it didn't even ship out till yesterday, and I'm still waiting on it to show up. So maybe it'll be here today, and we can start working on the tongue. And then lastly, last night, I was working on these stabilizers, figuring out how I wanted to make them because I want them to be removable because these things kind of hang down pretty far. You know, they stick up like six inches. So I wanted to make them kind of pop in, pop out, kind of like that, but a little different. But I don't like what I'm seeing. And then up front... I don't think I'll have enough clearance if we end up hitting ground. Like, cause I've had situations where the ground is so steep, you go to level out and you literally have the frame on the ground cause it's as close as you can get. And so I'm thinking I might just sell those on offer up or try and return them or whatever. Maybe I'll keep two of the four, I get four of them. I'm thinking about ordering the regular ones, the medium duty ones, cause these are more heavy duty and this is way overkill for this application. So I kind of want to get the ones that, you know, they mount up under the frame and they just rock down like that with one, one foot, one pad. And you screw them from the little right here. And there's a rod, you know, and it's got like a, it comes down and there's like a scissor joint there kind of thing. Anyways, I hope all that sign language made some sense, but think we're going to shoot for that maybe kind of debating if I want to spend more money which I'm out of so I mean we could just keep rolling with what we have and make it work but they're too big they're pretty heavy I don't really know if I really need to haul around four of those when we can get those uh, medium duty ones light duty ones you know um, these ones are stable as heck though these are very stable um, so yeah, I'm debating on that. And of course, we're still waiting on the springs to show up too so we can final mount the, the bracket because I want to make sure I get the length that I think I'm getting. I want to make sure I get the springs correct. And I did, seeing how I gotta had to 
reorder the springs, the thousand pound springs. Um, weren't gonna be available until next year, holding up the order. So I said, okay, you know, with, with the weight, I says, let me go ahead and get the 1250s. So how they do it is that would be, if you're looking on e-trailer, it's a 2,500 pound spring is what you're looking for, but it's actually 1250 each because they're figuring weight of the trailer is how you're filtering by your search results. So get on e-trailer, hit on trailer springs, and then 2,500 pound gives me a 1250 spring times two. Makes sense? Maybe. So waiting on the 1250s to come in and they're a different length from the thousand pounds because the thousand pounds were 26 these are 25 and 3 8 which i think are the same length as these so i just want to make sure i get them make sure they're the right ones before i tack those in place and then finish weld and plus when i go to finish weld these seeing how i got to get underneath because per the directions the directions are pretty strange they tell you to start right here and weld around underneath to the other side and then stop in the same place. And they don't want you to weld in here. Um, and that's hard to do unless you get under the camper, under the frame, and you start up here and I don't think I'm good enough to do that motion, but uh, we'll try. You're supposed to do it in one motion, not, not supposed to stop on the corners. Maybe you can stop in the middle. Maybe that's how I'll do it. It's probably, yeah, how I'll end up doing it. But it's pretty specific how they want you to weld it on there. So we're going to try and follow those directions um, whenever we get um, that. But the point is when we go to do that, because I sidetracked, um, the point is when we go to do that, if we got to be under the, the frame to do it, we might as well do all the under welds at the same time. So when I go to do that, I want to get the tires out of the way. Um, I want to have everything tacked in place, and I want to get the axle out of the way. Um, so get the tires out of the way, get the axle out of the way, and then get my get my um, what do you call it? The thing where you lay down on the on the it's, you lay down on it and you roll under cars. I forget what they call that, the body dolly or whatever the hell. So I'm gonna get on that clean the ground up real clean, sweep up everything real good, and then go around with the welder and just hit all the under welds at one time. Just do all of them because they all suck to do. Um, I really should have done them as I went, but I, I hate doing them, so figured I'd save it for last. So we still got axle mounts, stabilizer mounts, we got the tongue, um, we still got a lot to do, and hopefully I'll get um, a time lapse camera up today, so that when I'm do, do you know when I go to do some more work, you can actually see some footage of me looking like a retard doing stuff. So there we go.